Church. This morning's New Testament reading is Mark 6, verses 30 through 34 and 53 through 56. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now, many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Verse 53. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Genesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the hem of his garment, and all who touched it were healed. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. This was an exhausting week for me. I don't know about you, but... I worked late at the Water District office on Monday, Tuesday, and Friday afternoons, and I worked at the church with my daughter Allison on Thursday and Friday nights, trying to solve the case of the soundless songs. That sounds like a Nancy Drew book we should write, I think, don't you? <laughs> I hope we can solve it, by the way. Anyway, three years ago, when I preached from this lectionary passage, we had just finished another cherry picker's trot. If there had been one this year, it would have been this past Thursday night. I missed it. It's a lot of work for a lot of you, though, while I'm working at my other job. I know a couple of years ago when... <laughs> when we did this and many of the years so many of you have worked so hard making pies making boxes putting pies in boxes cutting pies setting up the booth taking it back down again a lot of work for you and I've appreciated it so much a lot of coming here and going there a lot like this summer actually this summer, our focus was different. It was getting our beloved church ready for reopening and the grounds too. And a lot of you have worked really hard on that. It's demanded a great deal of your time and energy. During extreme heat, which can sap our strength totally. It makes me tired just to think about it. And I know I've told you this before, but I loved that when my son Jeffrey was little, he would say, Mommy, I'm getting tired about this. Not tired of this, but tired about this. Well, I've been tired about not getting to see that Jeffrey and his wife Kim and my grandkids, Katie and William, for over a year. And that's going to happen in August. And I'm just so thrilled. That's one thing I can stop being tired about for sure. What are you tired about? Some of you have suffered pain and illness and worry about family members and relationships and finances. What have you had enough of? Enough work, enough pain, enough struggles, enough tears, enough worry, enough bills to pay, enough trips to the airport, not enough sleep. Are any of you tired today? Have you been coming and going so much this summer that you don't know whether you're coming or going? It's not that these hot summer weeks haven't had their blessings. Prayers have been answered. Healing has happened. 
food and supply drives for New Hope and Mead Food Bank are happening. The church has returned to the building. Photos have been taken and posted on Facebook and much rejoicing has happened and much laughter has been heard and more of both will continue. Today's passage from the Gospel of Mark relates a similar time of stress and exhaustion mixed with blessings and miracles in the lives of Jesus and his disciples. It begins right after Mark's account of the beheading of John the Baptist. Mark doesn't tell us what Jesus was thinking or feeling. He doesn't have to. John was Jesus' cousin. They had first met when they were in the wombs of their mothers, Elizabeth and Mary. John had leapt in his mother's tomb at the approach of his cousin and his Lord, and Elizabeth had been filled with the Holy Spirit then and there. The Gospels don't mention any connection between John and Jesus' boys, but we know that John preached repentance for forgiveness of sins and taught his own disciples about the Messiah who was to come. John had baptized Jesus in the Jordan River and had witnessed the Holy Ghost descending like a dove and had heard the voice of the Father from above praising his beloved Son. John was an important part of God's plan. John's was the voice in the wilderness preparing the way of the Lord. His murder was a foreshadowing of Jesus' own end and undoubtedly was a terrible burden for our Savior to bear, and he needed rest. The apostles, disciples called and commissioned to spread the good news, came to Jesus. And they told him what they'd been doing and teaching. Verses 12 through 13 of Mark 6 say that, quote, they preached that men should repent, and they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. Immediately the Savior said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. We are told that there were so many people coming and going that they didn't even have time to eat. I can relate to that one, not having time to eat at my job. I suspect that some of you can relate to those exhausted disciples today. Maybe you feel like there's just not enough time to do all that really needs to get done. Maybe you stay up too late at night trying to compensate. Perhaps there are more meetings and appointments and chores than there are white spaces on your calendar to schedule them. I know some of you've talked about how busy this summer has been and all that you have scheduled. My prayer for you and for me is that you and I will find time or make time to be alone with the Lord in the beauty of his creation or in a favorite easy chair just to be still and know his presence and his comfort. Hear Jesus' words of invitation again, speaking to you personally. Come away to a deserted place and rest a while. I truly know the Lord is saying this to me, and I feel certain that this message is for you too. You folks work too hard, whether you get paid for it or not. We all need adequate rest in the form of sleep and play and quiet time with God. One of my favorite scripture passages is Matthew eleven, twenty-eight through 30, where Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Is that what Jesus is whispering in your ear right now? Do you need rest for your soul? Jesus valued rest. 
demonstrated its importance. Wherever he went, except for his hometown, people followed him to bring the sick or to challenge him with questions. There are five different passages just in the Gospel of Mark where Jesus took his disciples away to some quiet place to escape the crowds. He attempted that in today's passage, but we're told that people were watching Jesus and his friends board a boat, and they ran on foot to undesert the deserted place. It sounds like the crowd beat Jesus and his disciples to their vacation spot. The King James Version says the crowd outwent them. That could have been disappointing, frustrating. Could have even made Jesus mad. But verse 34 says that when Jesus saw all those people, he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. These people had ruined an opportunity for much needed rest for Jesus and his disciples, but Jesus could only look on them with love and compassion and get back to work. It's interesting to think about what it means for people to be like sheep without a shepherd. People who are lost spiritually needing Christ in their lives, needing the Word of God, in danger of being preyed upon, needing God's protection. There are some ideas for starters. Let's look at what the Good Shepherd did for his people. First of all, he began to teach them many things. As the day went on and they became hungry, he fed 5,000 men and who knows how many women and children with five loaves of bread and two fishes and 12 baskets of food left over. You remember that. That passage was left out of today's reading. The account in the Gospel of John will be our scripture for next week's message. After that miracle meal and that very long day of preaching, Jesus got his disciples back into the boat to cross the sea and this big wind came up, and Jesus walked across the water and calmed the storm. When they got off the boat at Gennesaret, the people recognized Jesus, and they ran to get the sick so that they might just touch the hem of his garment and be healed. And that's the story for today. When we study a passage about Jesus, our two main goals, you'll remember this, I think, should be to figure out what the passage tells us about who Jesus is and what the passage tells us about who we are or who we are supposed to be. Clearly, in this passage, Jesus is the Good Shepherd who says to us, come to me and I will give you rest. He makes us lie down and sleep in green pastures. He leads us beside still waters, and he restores our souls. He knows and he meets our every need. He feels our pain. He hears our cries and pleas, knows when our hearts are broken because of the death of a loved one or the end of a relationship. He cares when we're worried about a doctor's appointment or a test or surgery or about the health of a friend or a relative. He knows when we despair about how we will be able to pay our bills. He knows when we're getting tired about our jobs and other situations, and he grieves when we're desperately lonely. He loves us despite our doubts and our sins, and he will bless us until our cup runs over. That's just the kind of God and shepherd he is, and the divine one who is the compassionate Good Shepherd is also the sacrificial Lamb of God. So what about us? Who are we in this story? We've talked about this fairly recently, but it doesn't hurt to keep thinking about it when these passages about the Good Shepherd come up. Because, of course, we are his beloved sheep adored by the compassionate shepherd who wants us to recognize his voice and come when he calls us by name. He wants to give us the rest and peace and comfort and love and healing and blessings that only he can give. He wants to fill our emptiness with joy. He wants to walk beside us 
in good times and bad times, whether we're coming or going. He wants to calm the storms within us and without. He wants us to follow where he leads so that the valley of the shadow of death will just be something to pass through and goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. Jesus asks that we trust and obey and pray. A few days ago, I came across an image that New Hope Resource Center had shared on Facebook a while back. It's a lovely image of a young woman, a hiker with a bath backpack, sitting at the edge of the cliff, smiling as she rests and takes in the scenery. It says, practice the pause, P-A-U-S-C. When in doubt, pause. When angry, pause. When tired, pause. When stressed, pause. And when you pause, pray. Just as Jesus has a double role in today's story, we have a double role too. I know you've been expecting this because I've said it fairly recently. The Good Shepherd doesn't intend for us to merely be his sheep. You know what comes next. Sheep with this shepherd are called to be shepherds too. Jesus says, feed my sheep. That doesn't mean to feed them the word only. It actually means literally to give food to the hungry and drink to those who thirst. When we help them, we're helping Jesus. If we trust and obey and follow Jesus, we will teach and feed and heal and show the kind of compassion and love that Jesus showed. We are surrounded by people who are like sheep without a shepherd. They're coming and going. They're exhausted. They are stressed, grieving, frightened, and lost. They need to hear the gospel news that they are loved and cherished by God and invited to be part of his flock and part of his kingdom. They need to know the kind of comfort, peace, and rest that only Jesus can offer. And seriously, if we don't tell them about that love and peace of Jesus, who will? And I know I've asked you that question a number of times before from the pulpit, and it's likely that you will hear it again because it comes from the heart of a loving God who wants our help in bringing all his sheep into the fold. It comes from a Savior who came that we might have life and have it abundantly. It comes from our Healer and our Redeemer who wants us to pause and rest and pray and know his peace. Hallelujah and Amen.